Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode we're going to be solving a Physics 7B Angular Momentum practice problem. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please leave a like and subscribe, it really helps this channel a lot. So let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. Please feel free to pause the video in order to copy the problem on your notes so that you can follow along. So we have a circular turntable and it rotates in a horizontal plane in the direction indicated in the diagram on a frictionless ball bearings at a rate of 6 revolutions per second. In the center of this turntable is placed a glass cylinder which has negligible mass filled with solid ice that is originally not spinning. The ice has twice the mass of the turntable and the radius of the cylinder is one half that of the turntable. When the cylinder first lands on the turntable, uh, you know, the turntable skids a little bit beneath it, but after a short time, they are rotating together. Part A of this problem says, compare the rotational inertias of the cylinder and the turntable by figuring out the ratio I cylinder over I turntable. Explain or show your work. Well, as you can see, I've written um, the problem down over here in my notes, but let's just go ahead and complement this information. The first thing that I have to tell you guys is that for this final exam, uh, students were provided the following equation at the very end of their exam, which is I disk is equal to one half M disk R disk squared. This is the generic equation for the moment of inertia of any disk. Okay, so the ice has twice the amount of mass than the turntable. In terms of equations, this means that M ice is equal to two mass of the turntable. So as you can see, you need two masses of the turntable in order to make one mass of the ice. Now, the radius of the cylinder is one half of the turntable. This means that you need two radius of cylinders or the ice in order to make one radius of turntable. And what we have to find is divide ice, uh, divide the rotational inertia of the ice by the rotational inertia of the turntable. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy the definitions. So this is moment of inertia of ice that would be, um, well, one, one half, just one half times mass of ice, radius of ice, squared. And over here, that would be one half mass of turntable, radius of turntable squared. Now the one halves are gonna cancel each other but now we need to figure out some way in which uh, we can either cancel these two or these two. As it is, we can't cancel them because this is ice, this is turntable, this is ice, this is turntable. But what we can do is uh, use the relationships that the problem provided in order to, uh, you know, cancel things out. So I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite mass, uh, mass of ice and I'm going to rewrite it as two times mass of turntable and I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing over here I'm going to rewrite mass of ice and that would be one half radius uh, radius I'm sorry of the turntable all of this square now over here I'm not gonna do anything so this is mass turntable and this is radius turntable square now this one half is inside of this square, which means that if I separate these two, this needs a square as well. So please make sure that you're mindful about that. Now I'm just gonna cancel the things that are alike. So mass of turntable gets canceled out and radius squared of the turntable gets canceled out. And we are left with two over here and four down. So I of I's divided by I of turntable is equal to 2 divided by 4, so this is equal to 1 half, and that will be our final answer for the first problem. This basically means that uh, you need two i's 
in order to make one turntable. So the turntable has double the amount of rotational inertia that the cylinder of ice. So let's just go ahead and um, work with part B of this problem. Part B says, compare the torque vectors, magnitude and direction on the cylinder and on the turntable while they are skidding. Explain or show your work. Well, for this, uh, what we need to do or what will be very useful is to use an angular momentum chart to solve this part. So let's go ahead and let's see if we can feel things too. So at the beginning, the ice is just uh, is just on top of everything, but it is not it is not rotating. So the ice has no initial angular momentum. So this is zero. The turntable is actually moving. Well, it's actually rotating. I'm sorry. And if you use your right hand rule, you'll see that from the side view, it does have an angular momentum pointing up. Like this. Now, the rules for an angular momentum chart are exactly the same as the rules for a normal linear momentum chart. So this has to add up. So the total initial angular momentum of the system is just whatever angular momentum the turntable had. Now, this problem is very particular about saying that this is a, um, rotating on a frictionless ball bearings. So the fact that this is frictionless means that there are no external forces and if there are no external forces, there are no external torques. So this is going to be zero. And because this row has to add up, this has to add up. Um, the total angular momentum of the system is exactly the same as the initial. Now, uh, the ice and the turntable are both spinning over here. So they will both have some combination that should add up to this. However, I don't really know what the magnitude of each of these should be because just because they are moving together, that doesn't mean that they have the same final angular momentum. What it means is that when two objects are rotating together, they have exactly the, they have the exact same angular velocity. So angular velocity of the ice is the same as, well, final angular velocity of the turntable. So we're just going to call it final. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do, and, and this is um, something that we're going to have to find later, but, uh, well, you know what? Let's just find it, and we're going to solve part B and C together uh, because completing this momentum chart essentially completes the entire final exam problem. So let's just go ahead and do that. So part C is basically finding this angular velocity. So let's just go ahead and do that. So in order to find this angular velocity, I'm going to start with a column and I'm going to make an equation for this column over here. So let's do that. So, um, well, you know what? Let's start over here. So I'm going to create an equation for this row. So this row says Li total is equal to L final total. And what I did is I used this row. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this column and this column to substitute over here and over here. So the total initial angular momentum is just equal to the angular momentum of the turntable. So L, I to L initial total is just equal to L initial turntable. And LF total, I don't really know, but I do know that both of them are rotating, so I need both of them there. So total final is equal to final turntable plus final ice. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to substitute with the equation L is equal I omega on every single one of these. So this is initial turntable, so this is I turntable times omega initial turntable. This is I turntable times omega final. And this is I of the eyes times omega final. Please notice that I didn't distinguish final turntable and final eyes because again, both of them are exactly the same. So I just went ahead and just left it as omega final. 
Now, the thing that I, so this number I have is just six. And the thing that I really wanna find is this omega final. So I'm just gonna go ahead and solve for it. So omega final is equal to the initial i of the turntable, like this, um, times the initial angular velocity of the turntable divided by i turntable plus i of i's, like this. So this is just a six, so we don't really have to worry about this. Actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and The only problem that we have right here is that we need uh, a number for either this guy or these two guys and we don't really have that. So we have to get creative. And for this part, we actually have to go back to this part over here because even, we, even though we don't have an exact number for these guys, we do have this relationship. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, substitute these eyes well, no, you know what's gonna be easier? A turntable, it's equal to two eyes. So I'm just gonna substitute these two and turn it into eyes. So this is omega final is equal to times six. This I'm gonna change into eyes. So this is two eyes, um, eye of eyes. This is another two eyes. And this is just gonna stay exactly the same. So this is six. Okay, guys, I'm sorry about this, but I just realized that my camera basically stopped working somewhere around here. So what I did to finish this little part of the problem was I basically, you know, substituted. Uh, I used this relationship over here, and then I turned all of the I turntables into I eyes. So every single time that I have uh, moment of inertia of a turntable, I turn it into two times the moment of inertia of the eyes. So I have two eyes over here, two eyes over here. These eye eyes just stays the same. And then I added them up. So this is two thirds. Now these two guys canceled out, which is exactly what I wanted, just to have some sort of cancellation of the eyes so that I could get like a final answer in terms of a number. And then my final answer was four revolutions per second. Now, I'm um, sorry about that. So what I was gonna do after that is, um, let me just move the microphone. Now, because the moment of inertia of the turntable is twice the moment of inertia of the ice, then what we can do is divide this guy in three. Now, this isn't necessary to complete this final exam problem, but you know, we don't have we're not in any rush here. So because this is twice this amount, then the turntable must have twice the final angular velocity of the eyes like this, and they need to add up to three thirds, so like this. Even though we don't have any numbers over here, we don't have any actual numbers, we can create a complete angular momentum chart by just using this proportion over here because they have the exact same angular velocity and we have a proportion of inertias. Now, the other problem that we haven't answered is, well, of course, I'm just gonna finish this up. This plus this has to be equal to this smaller arrow, zero plus this arrow has to be equal to this arrow and these need to cancel out. So at this point, uh, this angular momentum chart is complete. Now, the other question that we haven't answered is, compare the torque vectors, magnitude and direction of the cylinder and on the turntable while they are skidding. Explain or show work. Well, this is the work and this is self-explanatory. Delta L is equal, uh, is equal to net torque times delta T. So the turntable experiences a net torque going down and the ice experiences a net torque going up 
Even though both of the net torques are have opposite directions, their magnitude is exactly the same because they need to add up to zero. So that will be the final answer for part B of this problem. Part C was just finding this number which we have. And now part D says, after spinning together for a long time, all of the ice melts, but the liquid remains within the cylinder. Does the rate of rotation of the system increase, decrease, or stay the same? Explain how you know. Well, we don't really need to do any sort of numerical calculation for this. But, uh, so what happens here is that when the water was ice, all of the water was equally concentrated because it's a solid. So we just basically have a solid cylinder. But what happens when this turns and you know it's spinning but it, it's still solid. However, when this thing turns into water, what happens with water when you start spinning it? It's that it creates a vortex and all of the mass essentially goes towards the edge of the cylinder, right? Like when, whenever you're, you have like soup or cereal or something and you spin it like this, then you start creating a little vortex in which you have more mass at the edge and very little mass over here. So what happens here is, or, or well, the result of this is that you have more mass farther away from the axis of rotation when the water is liquid than when the water is solid. This means that um, you basically increased your uh, moment of inertia. Now, angular velocity is inertia times angular velocity. So if you increase your moment of inertia by putting the mass farther away from the axis of rotation, then what's gonna happen to your angular velocity is that it will go down. So this is the final answer. Our angular velocity will go down because I went up. And this basically solves the problem. So I really hope that this was useful to you guys. If it was useful to you, please leave a like in this comment. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I'll see that they, go, that they get answered. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.